And so, I mean, that's from the standpoint of pregnancy. Like if I were in at the stage in my life where I were looking to procreate, I would want to procreate with an omnivorous woman. And it's like saying something like that is controversial today, but it shouldn't Max be. Max Lugavir wants to procreate with an <laughs> omnivorous woman. Ladies, you have this is the sign that you have been looking for. It's a bad signal. Yeah. He became completely vegan-pilled. He became an advocate. He is an unbelievably effective debater at everything, hmm. uh, but particularly for veganism. And he found, after going vegan, that making a commitment, making a sacrifice uh, to the philosophy that he, the ethics that he'd been convinced by, he found that he was suffering. Uh, his body and his mental health had both taken a, hmm. a, a pretty big, like an increasingly big hit from this. Hey, what is going on guys? So today we're going to be responding to somebody named Max Lugaver, who was recently featured in a video titled Raising Your Kids Vegan is Child Abuse. This video was posted on Christian Williamson's channel. So to start, we have a very bold claim here in the title. Obviously the title means something like raising a child on a vegan diet is child abuse. The title isn't qualified with something like raising a child vegan can be child abuse if done the wrong way to which I would agree, and this would apply to raising a child on a non-vegan diet too. After watching the entire video, it seems that Max thinks that a vegan diet inherently will lead to negative health outcomes and is therefore child abuse. Now, as per usual on this channel, I expect somebody who makes a claim like this or even just vaguely implies it to provide some kind of health outcome data supporting the claim. Well, I watched the entire video and nothing of the sort was given to substantiate his position. Regardless, let's go through some of the parts of the video and I'll lay out where Max attempts to provide support for his position, but really doesn't. There was a New York Post article titled, I'm raising my child vegan. It's not as simple as you think. And you replied and said, child abuse. Yes. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, we are biologically adapted to be omnivores. And um, we know that the neonate relies on the mother deriving adequate nutrition from her food. And there are the, if you look at the most nutrient dense foods available to your average person today, there's literally a paper, people can look it up, published by Beal et al. two to three years ago, that ranked all the most nutrient dense foods, particularly by nutrients of concern. So nutrients that people tend to under consume today, zinc, vitamin B12, and things like that. And animal products were took all the top spots with the exception being uh, dark leafy greens, which are thought to be very, very nutrient dense because they're so calorie sparse and they can, they're a good source of vitamin C and folate and calcium and the like, but animal products are our most nutrient dense foods. All right. So we're going to go about responding to this one by one. He was asked to unpack the notion that raising a child vegan is child abuse. And the first thing he said was we're omnivores. Now, how exactly does the idea that we're omnivores get you to raising a child vegan is child abuse. Can one believe that in a natural sense, humans are omnivores while also holding the belief that with modern day food and technology, it is possible to raise a child vegan in a healthy way? Of course. It is totally possible that say humans are naturally omnivores, but with the help of you know modern day food and technology, humans can thrive on a plant exclusive diet with the help of something like a B12 supplement and maybe some others. In fact, we have health outcome data showing that vegans who take advantage of such technology can be healthy. There is even evidence to suggest that supplementation can perform better than natural sources of food for something like B12. You see, when somebody makes a claim like humans are omnivores in response to, oh, can a human being be healthy as a vegan or even a child? They're talking about the diet a human would need in a purely natural environment. But obviously in this situation, we are discussing whether a vegan diet can be healthy for children in an environment where we have different resources than we would have in a natural environment. This is why just claiming that naturally we are omnivores when trying to answer the question of can vegan children be healthy in the modern world is incredibly short-sighted. It really doesn't tell us much. Imagine if I asked the question, is it possible for humans to move at 50 miles an hour? And you said, of course not. Humans can only run at most 27 and a half miles per hour. I could just say, well, you're wrong because the technology of cars allows us to move well past 50 miles per hour. This is the way that I see Max and other non-vegans who try to, you know, discount the vegan diet by simply saying something like, naturally, we're omnivores. The next thing he does is say that animal products are some of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet 
and then cites a paper by somebody demonstrating this. Now, because we're looking for evidence that a vegan diet is unhealthy for children, we don't actually have to look at the paper he cites. I can actually fully grant that what he said about animal products and nutrient density is true. This still doesn't demonstrate that a vegan diet is unhealthy for children. I don't actually care if this is true when trying to evaluate if a vegan diet is unhealthy for children. Let's say that all animal products are more nutrient dense than all plant foods. How does this tell me that if a child is raised on a vegan diet, that they will necessarily be unhealthy. It doesn't. It just tells me that incorporating animal products into the diet of a child will facilitate the process of obtaining nutrients more than a diet without animal products. Again, I'm simply granting what he said about nutrient density to make the point that his second response of nutrient density though, like his response of we are omnivores though, does not substantiate the claim that children will be unhealthy if raised vegan. We need to look at nutrient intake and health outcomes. What happens when a child is raised on a vegan diet. Well, I already did a video with the help of Matthew Mendora and Dr. Matthew Nagra on this topic, so I'll have it linked below. It is very comprehensive, but I will briefly touch on some of the studies we covered in that video. In this paper, looking at the energy, macronutrient intake, and anthropometrics of vegetarian, vegan, and omnivorous children aged 1 to 3, they found that vegan and vegetarian diets in early childhood provide comparable amounts of energy and macronutrient pattern in accordance with recommendations and can ensure normal growth. There was a small percentage of vegan and vegetarian children classified as stunted. The authors mentioned of the eight children making up this percentage, two had very low energy intake and were exclusively breastfed for an excessive amount of time. Obviously, these issues are not inherent to a vegan diet and can also be solved through vegan means. There can be a non-vegan child who is underfed in terms of calories or is exclusively fed through breastfeeding for an excessive amount of time. I have more papers I want to get to, but there were other explanations for the remaining stunted children that can be found here. And just to be clear, again, these are not explanations inherent to a vegan diet. So here is another paper looking at micronutrient and fatty acid intake of the same groups just gone over. They found that regardless of supplementation, vegan and vegetarian children had more favorable intake of several micronutrients and fatty acids than omnivorous children. Critical nutrients for all three diet groups were vitamin D, iodine, and DHA, with omnivorous children having the highest intakes which to be clear, was without supplements. Vegans can just take a vitamin D supplement, which was recommended by the authors for all groups at the end of the conclusion. Vegans can also use an algae-based DHA supplement and supplemental iodine or use iodized salt. This paper covering children and adolescents aged six to 18 years old had results confirming the position of several national nutrition and pediatric societies that a vegetarian and vegan diet can meet the recommended nutrient requirements in childhood and adolescence. Again, these papers and many more are much more comprehensive comprehensively gone over in this video. You can find it in the pinned comment below. This video covers another six studies on vegan children and not just on nutrient intake, but also health outcomes. But long story short, and don't just take my word for it, definitely go watch the whole video later. Vegan diets for children do not necessarily lead to negative health outcomes and are therefore not necessarily child abuse as Max seems to think. Special attention does need to be given to specific nutrients of concern, but this kind of principle applies to omnivorous diets too, as demonstrated by this paper. Matthew Nagra actually mentioned this paper in a recent reel he uploaded to Instagram going over some of the findings in a recent systematic review on the nutrient intake and status of children and adolescents consuming plant-based diets and omnivorous diets, which, similar to the paper cited before, conflict with the notion that vegan diets are inherently abusive or unhealthy. Can plant-based kids get enough nutrition? This new systematic review evaluated the nutrient intake and status of children and adolescents following plant-based diets. They included 33 publications from between the year 2000 and 2022, and none of the included studies found any significant differences in total calorie intake between meat eaters, vegetarians, and vegans. However, on average, protein intake was lower amongst vegetarians and vegans compared to meat eaters. However, it was generally above recommendations. Although there is some debate around whether those recommendations should actually be higher. It's also worth noting that in some of the studies, the vegans did consume similar amounts of protein to the meat eaters, so it did depend on the population being studied. Fiber intake, on the other hand, was clearly highest amongst the vegans, with the meat eaters failing to meet the adequate intake in every study that looked at fiber intake. The vegans also had the highest polyunsaturated fat intake and lowest saturated fat intakes, which bodes quite well for cardiovascular health. As for micronutrients, if we exclude supplements, vegans had higher intakes of some micronutrients like folate, but lower intakes of others such as vitamin B12 compared to meat eaters. And all diet groups had low intakes of vitamin D. But when measuring actual nutrient status, there generally weren't huge differences in rates of deficiency amongst the different diet groups, and this may partly be explained by supplementation and fortified food intake 
amongst all the diet groups. Nonetheless, there are some nutrients that vegans and vegetarians need to be cognizant of, there are others that meat eaters need to focus on, and there are some that all dietary groups need to consider, such as vitamin D. Nutritional deficiencies are not a vegan-specific concern. Um, vitamin B12, crucially important. There's so many DHA fat, right? Like preformed DHA fat, which is found exclusively in animal products. So it is not true that DHA is exclusively found in animal products. You can also find it in an algae-based DHA supplement. The authors of this paper even mention them as a recommendation for omnivorous children. And so, I mean, that's from the standpoint of pregnancy. Like if I were in at the stage in my life where I were looking to procreate, I would want to procreate with an omnivorous woman. And it's like saying something like that is controversial today, but it shouldn't Max be. Max Lugavere wants to procreate with an <laughs> omnivorous woman. Ladies, you have this is the sign that you have been looking for. It's a bad signal. Yeah. Yeah, so a little weirdly worded, but I think what he is trying to get at is that he would want to procreate with a healthy woman, not necessarily an omnivorous woman. I doubt he would rather health-wise procreate with an omnivorous woman who is barely eating anything versus a vegan woman who is consuming an adequate diet with appropriate supplementation. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's, that's super important. I think like you... With regard to plant-based diets, you can cobble together a diet that leads to better biomarkers. And, and ultimately, look, a plant-based diet compared to the standard American diet is going to be a healthier choice, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the classic vegan diets aren't healthy, but they are healthier than the standard American diet. Well, in this paper, vegans were compared to what many would consider a, quote, healthy omnivorous diet and still perform better on different metrics. I cover this more in depth in a video response to Mike Israel, so I'll have it linked below in the description. But yeah, this is something we consistently hear from non-vegans trying to bash vegan diets. They will qualify their statements with something like, quote, it's healthier than one of the worst possible diets, but it's not necessarily healthy. Well, results like this can conflict with this notion directly. But I think from the standpoint of pregnancy and ultimately development and, and childhood development, I think it's really important to, um, yeah, to allow your child who's inevitably going to be a picky eater as it is, because that's inevitably they're their children child. because they're a child. Yeah. I think it's really important to not cross off the list because of some silly ideology one of the most nutrient dense, the most nutrient dense category of foods available to your average human. Max claims that veganism is a silly ideology. I would like to know why Max thinks the idea that humans shouldn't have the right to mass breed, exploit, commodify, and murder animals is a silly idea. What is so silly about opposing this, especially when it's possible to do so while remaining healthy? What do you, do you have any idea what will happen to a child who is lacking in many of the sort of things that a vegan diet would cause there to be a bereft uh yeah i mean look scarcity of. stunted development um failure to thrive okay so this is the part where you're supposed to provide health outcome data showing what this dude is asking about and of course max doesn't the fact is an inadequate vegan diet vegetarian diet and omnivorous diet can lead to all of these things not a vegan diet inherently i mean i you know i just think it's i, I think you're it's essentially sometimes referred to as nutritionism, this idea that humans with all of our hubris can distill food into its constituent nutrients and then replicate food in a way with, with processed alternatives. I mean, if you take something like the product Soylent, it's a perfect example of that, right? It's like what happens when Silicon Valley people try to create food? They break down a food into its constituent nutrients, right? The data that makes a food food, according to them. This is the code of food. Yeah, this is the code of food. And, and we have this ultra processed, ultimately crap product. But here it is, right? Like you're not going to develop a deficiency disease if this is all you consume every day. And so that's like nutritionism. And I think it fails time and time again because we didn't evolve with these nutrients in isolation. We've evolved with food. So Max claims that this fails time and time again because we didn't evolve eating these nutrients in isolation. Now, presumably, when somebody says that a particular nutritional intervention fails time and time again, they're going to, after saying this, substantiate the claim with evidence showing that time and time again, such an intervention fails at providing adequate nutrition. And what did Max do here? Not that, he just made a vague appeal to evolution. Well, we're clearly more evolved to consume pigs than we are to consume artificially processed cereal fortified with B12. Yet, this paper suggests that the food we're less evolved to consume, or artificially processed cereal fortified with B12, does a better job at getting children to optimal B12 levels than the food we're more evolved to consume. This is another paper which conflicts with Max's claims. Clearly, 
Just because we didn't evolve eating a particular food or a food's constituent does not mean that either of them will necessarily fail to help us achieve a specific nutritional goal to a greater degree than a more natural food which we evolved consuming. Rather than look at if we evolved eating a certain food to determine if it's healthy, we need to look at the health outcomes they yield. And we have a handful of nutrients that we know are essential, but that list of what's essential, what's conditionally essential, and what's non-essential is changing all the time as it should. I don't understand how this idea can't also be looked at as an argument for vegan diets. It could be the case that we discover that we need more of say nutrient X, which is exclusively found in plant foods and therefore we need to consume something closer to a plant-based diet. Just making this vague appeal to what we think is essential changes all the time can be in favor of both omnivorous and vegan diets depending on what essential nutrient we discover is more or less needed. And foods, don't just contain these single nutrients in isolation, right? Like an orange isn't just doesn't just provide vitamin C, right? There are countless other innumerable like nutrients that we have yet to even name likely compounds in, you know, in an orange that might have an entourage effect that might increase the absorption, the bioavailability of the vitamin C, for example. Yeah, and this is another thing that can lead to the idea that we should be consuming something closer to a plant-based or vegan diet. What if we discover there is something in animal products that incur a detriment as opposed to a benefit? Again, Max is opposing an idea against the consumption of plant-based diets that could in fact, in some contexts, be an argument for plant-based diets. The fact is that mysterious, beneficial, or harmful nutrients though that we haven't discovered yet though, could go both ways. You know, foods have all of these different nutrients and you take a food like red meat, right? Like red meat has, uh, it contains vitamin B12, which somebody on a plant-based diet might say, well, that's the one essential nutrient you can't get on a plant-based diet. I can just take a vitamin B12 supplement. But what about the constellation of nutrients that that vitamin B12 comes with, right? Like the heme iron, the carnitine, the carnosine, the creatine, which we know is really important from a standpoint of muscular health, right? All right, so I've already done a video on how basically all of these nutrients are not essential. I'll have it linked below. And look, the standard American diet isn't, isn't great either. Like you have a lot of children these days that have early onset hypertension, early onset type two diabetes. So I'm not saying that the alternative is, a sta is the standard American diet, mm. but I think that you can, that, yeah, that like you can, the ultimate optimal diet for, certainly for a developing human, but also for an adult is a diet that incorporates both animal products and, and uh, plant products. Evidence, none, next. It's interesting to think that the ch child abuse thing is, uh, like a really interesting frame of it because you are locking in to this neonatal human a kind of development that they didn't choose yeah that they had no volition in saying yes or no to and i guess you know largely until the age of probably 14 or 15 when they can use the stove themselves and actually fully understand what's going into them you know even throughout preschool so on and so forth you're still largely doing that but when it's you have to, what you eat is what your child eats yeah. in some regard. Uh, it, it's wild. Yeah, so this applies to literally any diet you choose for a child, mind blown. I have a friend, Alex, who was a uh, vegan uh, philosopher for a good while. He was uh, ethically convinced by Peter Singer's work, uh, Animal Liberation, which I still think from an ethical perspective, I, I think that we're going to look back on what we do now with much of animal farming and think of it as abhorrent. I think you're gonna look back and see it as not quite sort of Holocaust-y, but in that sort of realm, oh my God, we had sentient animals and we did this to them. Yeah, this doesn't look quite Holocaust-y at all. I'm Jewish by the way, so don't get offended. He became completely vegan pilled. He became an advocate. He is an unbelievably effective debater at everything, mm. uh, but particularly for veganism. And he found, after going vegan, uh, making a commitment, making a sacrifice uh, to the philosophy that he, the ethics that he'd been convinced by, he found that he was suffering. Uh, his body and his mental health had both taken a, hmm. a, a pretty big, like an increasingly big hit from this. And he, <laughs> he posted the day that he became unconvinced that he could meet an adequately balanced vegan diet he immediately felt like it was his, um, he was compelled to tell his audience because again, he yeah. came here, he got here from being ethical and being truthful and, and high integrity with his ethics. And then 
as soon as those had changed, he decided to put a post out. And I said, don't do this. You are opening yourself up to a ton of criticism. Wait until you can do the video. And he said, well, yeah, but what if someone sees me eating salmon on a train or something in the UK? Like, I, I'm not going to feel in line. So again, he was like hoisted by his own ethics. Again, he got absolutely pilloried by the internet for doing it. We, You know, you were supposed to, you said that you understood and a blah, blah, blah. And then he did a video talking through how he was struggling to be able to eat a completely balanced, uh, sufficiently robust plant-based diet. And again, people had massive problems. And now, I think he's probably one year hence-ish. Wow. Mental health is way better. His uh, pursuit that he goes after in life is flourishing. His energy levels have improved, all of this stuff. Again, this isn't for me to say, look, vegans, you're condemning yourself to a life of low energy misery. But there are people out there for whom the limitations that you place on yourself by going on a vegan diet make getting a balanced diet so much more difficult again. Yeah, so he's talking about cosmic skeptic here. I already did a whole video responding to that, but yeah, I'm very surprised that Alex consuming something like zero to 700 calories a day resulted in him not feeling good. And if you're a 24 year old YouTuber and writer who maybe still needs to do a bit of growing up, you. Life's hard enough as it, like you, you're just trying to get up before midday. Yeah, life can be hard, but learning how to consume an adequately planned plant-based diet is not. I would argue it is just as hard, if not maybe slightly more hard due to less options when compared to trying to consume a healthy non-vegan diet. Both kinds of diets require a kind of planning. And at a certain point, I mean, eating healthy just becomes automatic. Yes, there's a point where you have to learn for a little bit and like learn new things and learn what to consume, what not to consume. But after a certain point, you just know this information and you just go on with your life and it doesn't really take away much from anything else. And also when you compare the difficulty of the decision to go vegan and, you know, changing your diet to the difficulty of the lives of the animals that are bred into existence, exploited and murdered, you really have no room to complain. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you're trying not to go out and party with your friends too much. You're trying to like learn what productivity is and how do I do my taxes? And like, I, the rela I've got a relationship or I'm not in whatever, you know, these are additional uh, levels of complexity and difficulty that I don't think you need to add into your life. You know, this wisdom just led me to the belief that because, you know, trying to figure out how to pay my taxes is so hard, I'm gonna have to keep paying for animals to be bred, exploited, and murdered for a sandwich. Imagine looking into the eyes of a cow that is about to be murdered so that you can have a hamburger for McDonald's and saying something like, sorry, bro, taxes. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Again, if you want a more comprehensive look at the studies gone over in this video, please check out the video linked in the pinned comment. It covers them in much more depth. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you support my work and want to get early access to it, you can click the link in the pinned comment and support me on Patreon. And if you don't know, I do have a book going over most, if not all, of the anti-vegan arguments you can hear online. If you want to get that as well, that'll be linked in the pinned comment. And lastly, you can get vegan merch and protein powder by clicking the links in the pinned comment. Buying those helps support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Dude, fuck off. I don't want anything to do with you. Don't ever speak to me again. You're a fucking piece of shit. Even vegans don't get your weird, stupid, wannabe sense of irony here. Who is your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes. Dude, 